I believe that asset management is really a, a central activity uh, of any successful organization, whether uh, it's Denver and Union Station, or I'm sorry, uh, Denver International Airport. I'm thinking about Denver and Union Station, um, or uh, any other uh, of the modes uh, of transportation. Um, uh, I started out um, my adult life in the United States Army. Uh, and I was in the United States Army for a little over 24 years. Uh, and uh, in, in any of the services, uh, I think asset management uh, is the key, uh, uh, or one of the big keys in military service, uh, because that is uh, a huge piece in terms of keeping equipment uh, keeping uh, the facilities, all of those things up to par uh, in uh, a military environment. And so that is sort of when I started thinking about uh, asset management uh, way back when I was uh, uh, in the military. Uh, and so um, I was recruited back to Denver from running uh transportation in Los Angeles County for a little over six years, um, where we uh, actually included asset management in uh, what's called Measure M, uh, which is uh, an infrastructure measure, a transportation measure uh, that we got passed in 2016. And what we said then was you can't build new capital programs without taking care of it. Uh, and we were successful in getting a slice of uh, that massive sales tax measure to be dedicated to asset management throughout the life of that measure, which by the way, has no sunset. We were bold enough to go out to voters in the largest county in America uh, and say to them uh, that if we build this infrastructure, we have to take care of it. So therefore, this sales tax measure should not end unless voters decide to end it. Uh, and people understood that. People understood that um, you know, if you build it, you gotta take care of it. And one of the examples uh, that, that I used then was you wouldn't buy a car and never change the oil. This is asset management. Uh, and I'm happy to say that um, it's kind of funny because um, the, the measure began to poll the no sunset measure uh, with asset management embedded in it began to poll higher than the 40 year measure that was originally thought about. And I don't know uh, what the psychology is around that uh, other than people thought 40 years was too long, uh, but they thought forever was good to go. So uh, the psychology around that is is pretty interesting. So um, uh, came back to Denver, and uh, as Jennifer mentioned, one of the first thoughts uh, in uh, the vision uh, or Vision 100 that we put forth uh, to prepare this airport for 100 million passengers, one of the key priorities was asset management. It's such a priority that we made it a... Uh, a pillar, one of four pillars in that Vision 100. Uh, and we call it uh, taking care of what we have. And so it's not, or maintaining what we have, not a real fancy title, but it's a, it's a title that makes sense. So <clears throat> this Vision 100 says that we need to prepare this particular airport for 100 million passengers. Um, Denver International Airport uh, was designed for 50 million annual passengers. Uh, the end of this year, we will be at 78 million annual passengers. Um, and in the next three or four years, we will be at 100 million annual passengers. So this slide really lays out that Vision 100 and our asset management strategy uh, to say in pillar two, we're gonna grow our infrastructure. That means completing major projects on time, on budget. And then of course, pillar three says that we will not only build new infrastructure, 
but we will maintain what we have. And that becomes um, a huge task. Uh, we have, uh, as you see on the right slide, side of the side, we have, uh, we have to maintain so many different assets. These are assets by the numbers. <clears throat> and uh, we are doing this in a very sustainable um, way and a redundant way. Uh, but we made this one of the uh, pillars uh, in our overall plan. It's just that important. Um, we have set the expectations uh, for our staff to begin delivering uh, these various projects and also doing uh, assessments uh, that I'm sure Brian will talk about during the panel. Uh, but it's important to begin uh, to do assessments on the assets that you have so you can understand the condition of your assets. Uh, and I'm a big, big proponent of um, you know, having a predictive asset management system um, where we have a good idea of when the asset will break down and we're not just waiting for the asset to break down. So you can uh, sense my passion around this subject. Uh, I could go on and on about asset management um, uh, that started for me uh, when I was in uniform and and, and, and making sure, and when I was in garrison and I was not deployed, all we were doing was taking care of our assets. That's all we were really doing uh, when we were um, uh, you know, on base or in garrison. So thanks again for allowing me to sort of set the tone uh, for the meeting today. Um, as we look around the country in all modes, we see uh, bridges not in good state of good repair. We see highways um, that uh, never were designed for the volume of vehicles uh, that are traversing them right now. All of these things uh, tie into asset management along with uh, getting a qualified um, workforce ready to take care of these assets as well. So um, I wish you all the best as you explore ways to inject asset management principles into your operations.